Do you remember very much about the about the big flu epidemic? Yes, I remember something about that. That was after I was married. You see, that was the world to close of World War One, and uh, uh, of course we were married at that time, and uh, uh, we was around it, in it, over it, and all about it. But we never had it. Hmm. Neither one of us. Uh, we escaped uh, the flu epidemic. Now, I don't know why or how or anything on the goodness of God, I reckon, that we escaped it. But uh, people were dying all around us, you see, with the flu. We knew a lot of friends, uh, uh, a young girl, just mother, had a little baby in arms. At the church down in the street, died. She buried down in the Oddfellow Cemetery, and uh, uh, Dory Moore preached her funeral. And uh, I just well, remember a few things like that. They died faster than they could bury them, didn't they? I did. They died in a lot of places faster than they could bury yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Now I've got a book there, uh, a sermon by Brewer, and he tells a story. His his brother was. Dying, he was in the service, and he used, and Grover, the oldest brother, was a preacher, of course, and he went and told the stories of the vigil he kept at the bedside of his brother. And he had the flu, no hope for him, you see, but he was in the, uh, with the rest of the flu victims, but he went and stayed with him. The last few hours that he lived, he told a story in a book up there, along in the sermon. And uh, we had, uh, of course, I was working, we had a salesman on the road. We had one salesman that uh, he got hooked with it uh, down, I think he was probably in the Carolinas, North Carolina, I think. The name was Coe. And, uh, he told a story after he got back that he just, all he got, about all the treatment he got, he just outlived it. He's a big, strong fellow, and he just, mm -hmm. he just outgrew it. Yes. He didn't have very much care or treatment or anything. He was down with the flu in the hospital, but uh, there was just so many people that couldn't take care of him. But he come out of it, but he had no treatment much. But uh, yes, I remember. Uh, you see, I I wasn't. I was uh, uh, registered for service, but I was deferred because I was married, and uh, uh, I kept calling up from this area, Wood County, and. Uh, kept calling men that I knew, you know. So my turn finally come, and I knew I'd be in the next call, next group that went from Wood County, I'd be in it. And before my time come, the armistice was signed. Mm. So I didn't have to go. You know, I can just see so many things, the goodness of God, the only way I know to explain it how I've come through so many things. And that's one of them. We escaped the flu, both of us, mm -hmm. there was a victory with it. And then I didn't have to go to service. And I'd read of that. I'd already been examined and uh, ready to, to enlist. And I had to, I would have had to if war had lasted. Well, I suspect everybody else then, all your brothers was probably married by then too, wasn't they? My. Wasn't then Grover and Uncle Ben and Uncle Leroy, were they all married? Is that how oh, they all yeah, got deferred? Yeah. They were all older too, you see. Uh-huh. And uh, so it wouldn't affect them. My immediate family, you see, I didn't have any any relatives, or she didn't. This was in the service at all. It was all over age. And then, you see, I was too old for the Second World War, and uh, Vietnam, and the Korean, and war, war, war everywhere. 
in my short time. Yeah.